in the world today, on the market today, so many labor-saving devices that you have to work all your life to pay for them. This girl wanted a medallion. Her boyfriend asked her, what do you want for Christmas? She says, a medallion. Well, he didn't know what they were. It's a big round metal that you wear around your neck. And so he didn't know what you called them, he didn't know what they were. But he wanted to get her one for Christmas, and he went into the department store, and on the perfume counter, on the first floor, there was the clerk wearing one of those. So he pointed at it, and he says, what do you call those, and where do you get them? And the little clerk turned red as a beet and said, falsies, first floor lingerie. The church had a rummage sale, and one of the women came up to the minister and said, you see that little room over there that was all full? She says, I emptied every bit and sold everything in there. And the minister said, that's the cloak room. A little boy came running to his grandma, and he says, Grandma, Grandma! Dad backed the car over my lunch. And the grandma says, that's wheels on meals. And Bob was worried about his fourth daughter getting married. And his friend Ed said, his friend Ed said, why are you worried? And Bob says, well, My first daughter married a man from Singleton, New Hampshire, and they had one child. My second daughter married a man from Twin Oaks, Missouri, and they had two children. My third daughter married a man from Three Rivers, Michigan, and they had three children. So why are you worried about your fourth daughter? She's going with a man from the Thousand Islands. This is Glendora Cheerful Look at Life. And why did the bunny rabbit ask to be changed into a goon within the next 24 hours? So he could be here today and goon tomorrow. Well, this is announcement time, folks. You got any announcements? This is the end of the July cycle a chat with Glendora, and it looks like there will be 16 half hours for the month of July. Here's a note I would like to have you see from Doris Wallace. She was so thrilled that a chat with Glendora stood up for her on uh, uh, cable television in uh, Nassau County, where $49.95 plumbing, sewer, and drain. Ruined her bathroom. Doris went to court. She got $3,000. And then when she started to collect it, $49.95 sewer and drain. Hired a, cookie, a crooked lawyer. And uh, they stole the $3,000 from her. They got the court to, uh, to vacate it. And the people involved in that were Stephanie Zero and Howard Lane and uh, who was the judge? I'll have to look up the judge for you in the Queen City Court. But that's the way the courts work all the time. Here are lovely letters from Mary Ramage, Mohegan Lake, the Yorktown system. Uh, Mary thought that a chat with Glendora, she watches it with an eagle eye, and she thought that a chat with Glendora was not on, but it was. All she saw was this symphony orchestra and Suzanne McCormick playing Grieg's Piano Concerto in A minor. Pleased to announce that a chat with Glendora is on in Springfield, Massachusetts on Comcast 
The time is 11.30 p.m. on Thursdays. Thank you, Jeff Zanuck. Please try to do a little bit better on that time. There are worse times than 11.30 p.m., but try to get it down between 8 p.m. and 11 p.m. Here's a picture that you people who lived in the Albany, Troy, Schenectady area and received the signal of WRGB General Electric. This is Glendora in what? You're right, Satellite 6. And that's my Uncle Lester and his sister, my mother. Isn't that nice? When was that taken? Around 1960, 61. Uncle Lester told me the bunny joke. Why the bunny wanted to be changed into a goon in the next 24 hours. And other than that, you hear the cat bird. Who harasses me all day long to feed him. And I feed him and he doesn't go out and eat it. I thought this was kind of interesting. My husband and I for 48 years would enter in the diary every day, what we spent and what we spent it for and what came in and whom it came from. And then at the end of the week we would take all of those figures and put them in the columns. Groceries, gasoline, a chat with Glendora, haircuts. And at the end of the month we would add up what was in each column and take the total and put it in the year sheet. For instance for the month of July. And then at the end of the year, we would add up all of those totals on the month sheet and see what we'd spend on the year. For instance, on rent, electricity. And we have all these totals since 1937. And I want to read you some of these totals. The total amount we spent for airtime for Glendora TV ads was $545,000. The total amount that we spent for rent was $291,000. The total amount that we spent for telephoning is $100,000. We spent $100,000 on telephone. Uh, the total time for the total amount that the federal government, federal withholding, took out of our paychecks was $99,000 federal withholding. Are these interesting to you and how do they compare with your totals? Uh, groceries from 1937 through 2006. $92,000. Car repair is the next highest. $82,000. Postage since 1937. $50,000. A chat with Glendora and technical equipment, like cameras, videotapes, batteries. $46,000. Gasoline. $44,000 in a lifetime. Well, not yet. Printing. Printing. $39,000. FICA, federal insurance, taken out of your paycheck, $38,000.
videotaping, $31,000. Donations receded, money given away, $31,000. Office supplies, $29,000. Clothes, $27,000. Gifts, $17,000. Household, $12,000. Newspapers, $9,000. Franklin was a newspaper reporter. And he bought newspapers wherever he could see them. Cleveland Plain Dealer. Boston Globe. New York Times. Do you have any announcements, folks? Uh, this is, uh, just a second before I read you this, this is Mary Ramage again. It is Wednesday and I am watching and Little House on the Prairie. And thank you Thursday for dot com. She's a great fan of dot com. She never calls me on the phone, but what she asks, what is .com doing now? Thank you for .com's pretty face. And Sebastian sleeping. That's the other cat, Sebastian. Thank you for your letters, Mary Ramage. And then she writes down what she sees on the screen. Medical students. Thank doctors, uh, thank donors for bequeathing of bodies. Judges agglomerate. Judges agglomerate. They form themselves into a ball. They collect themselves into a ball, a mass. They cluster. And they all do the same thing. And with them, the game is aggrandizement. They try to make themselves great or greater as to honor, wealth, position, preferment, prestige. And they get none of this. Nobody likes them. Beautiful weather today, folks. July 14th. Nice little breeze. And everything's so green. And we have a hornet right on the camera. Did you want me to take your picture, hornet? Well, nothing hurts like a hornet, like, ooh, wow. Okay, this is the New York State Commission on Judicial Conduct. And this was received on June the 27th, and it was memo endorsed by Glendora soon thereafter, July 4th. And it's about the incompetence of the New York State Commission on Judicial Conduct. It says, TV audience and internet audience, are you struck with amazement? They have been admonished. They have been notified. It must be that they are tentacled so deeply 
they cannot extricate themselves. And this is, to me, as to the judicial misconduct of Brian Hansberry, a judge in the city court of White Plains. Nobody could have done a job as a judge worse. And what do they do, the Commission on Judicial Conduct? They let him go. They let him go. The Commission on Judicial Conduct, we pay for to protect us from bad judges, and they fail utterly, totally, completely. And they are adynamic. They've lost their dynamics. They're impotent, and they're derelict, and they continue habitually, and con they continue habitually, constitutionally, lacking in courage, commonly contemptuous. This is the New York State Commission on Judicial Conduct. They gather themselves into a ball, a mass, a cluster, and kid themselves that they thereby aggregate wealth, power, rank, honor, and as I said before, they get none of that. And it does not exist. Daily they make New York State worse, corruption more severe, and more offensive. They addle with more commotion and perturbation. This is the New York State Commission on Judicial Conduct. Totally useless. They have failed the constitutional requirements of both state and nation. They have perjured their oaths and implemented the self-executing mandates of the 14th Amendment, Section 3. A judge who perjures his oath loses his job. Four, a judge who perjures his oath loses his pension. Now, this is not only a judge. Anybody else on the Commission of Judicial Conduct had to take an oath to protect the Constitution. They have committed treason and sedition against the people, the true, and are a danger to the land. Glendora continues her prosecution of the New York State Commission on Judicial Conduct. And of course, a copy of this goes to Elena Sassauer. And Doris Sassauer, who know completely and thoroughly and disgustingly their record and have fought them in the courts. In fact, Elena Sassauer celebrated her anniversary of being sent to jail for six months because she went to the Senate Judiciary Committee and spoke up and told the truth about a candidate. Unqualified to be appointed a United States District Judge. And because she told the truth, she was sent to jail by a judge who no longer deserves the title of citizen of the United States. Thank you, Elena Sassauer. Thank you, Dora Sassauer. Tenants and Neighbors is a uh, non-for-profit organization calls for housing reforms and for you people
in New York. Here's her newsletter. Tenants and Neighbors is the name of the association. And they protect you against greedy landlords. Uh, they're located in Manhattan, down on something street. I think it's down in the village. Tenants and neighbors. And I think it would be good for you to join them if you have a bad landlord. Tenants and neighbors alert. The rent guidelines board wants to price you out of the city. Tenants and neighbors is going all out to stop the Rent Guidelines Board from imposing another unfair rent hike. They're bought and sold. You know, they're always going to be on the side of the landlord. Because, I think, a few bucks. Skip from one hand to another. I would like to call your attention to the meat analogs. Uh, all of these products are made either from grain or from soybean. And uh, they contain no cholesterol. You know, don't go to your doctor for cholesterol. Don't take cholesterol meat uh, pills. Just stop eating meat. Just stop eating animal products. And some of these products are Big Franks. It's a delicious Frankfurter. Chili. Excellent. Uh, chocolates. All of these products look like meat and taste like meat, but have no soybean and eschew cruelty to animals. Bludgering, all the other cruelty that goes with the slaughter of poor, innocent, defenseless animals. Uh, dinner cuts, fried chick, linkets, that's a sausage, prime steaks, saucets, Savory dinner loaf, scallops. You prepare these just the way you would bloody meat, but they're salubrious. They're healthful and they're delicious. And you know you're eating with health. June 28th is the anniversary of Elena's, Ruth Sassauer's brave stand for a man who should not have been appointed as a United States District Judge. Okay, I guess that's all of the announcements. What are you going to do next? We also welcome Manchester, New Hampshire, to the Glendora Public Access Network, TV network. I know it's being played because I received uh, two calls from two young men up there. Do you know that computers are in the Bible? Yes. Eve said to Adam, do you want an apple too? Well, I think we did a good job reporting to you what's going on. Uh, the evils that are stacked up against you. But, showing you that the way you fight evil is just to do good. You go out and do more good. And we believe in your perfection. We believe that you can be perfect. And we urge you to spend your alone time with God the first thing in the morning. Get a devotional and read a Bible passage every morning. The one this morning was beautiful. It was about Jesus Christ who said, I and my Father are one. I am in my Father and my Father is in me. That would be John 10. And then read the meditation about the Bible passage, and say your prayer, and then sing your hymn. 
every 15 minutes rejoice about something and at the start of every hour count 15 blessings.